What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Ranton Review Pro Wrestling. We're doing a countdown today. Five reasons why the West has fallen out of love with New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's no big secret that over the last year and a half that the interest in NJPW has decreased in the West. Uh, this also, of course, coincided with several things that happened. We're going to go through five that I personally think have affected the interest in the United States and some of the other Western countries like the UK and Australia into watching New Japan Pro Wrestling and why the viewership is probably not what it was a couple years ago back in 2016, 17, and 18. But before we get into that, I want to remind you guys that this is YouTube. And YouTube likes this algorithm. And what the algorithm likes is for you to hit the like button because when you do so, you do let a lapsed New Japan fan or a fake New Japan fan know about this video and perhaps they might show interest in the company again. I'm kidding about that. But no, definitely hit the like button so you can let other New Japan fans in all seriousness know about this video as they're searching through YouTube. I appreciate it very much. So these aren't in any real discernible order. So the first one I'm going to talk about is obviously the pandemic. Now, I personally say creatively speaking, and it seemed like business-wise, New Japan was still cooking up right up until the pandemic started in March of 2020. They just come off a very successful two-night Wrestle Kingdom that was very highly attended. They made a lot of money off of that show. They then had their first New Beginning shows. Tetsuya Naito had his really, really stunning defense against Kenta for the IWGP Double Championship, and then everything shut down for a number of weeks. While in the West, uh, WWE and AEW were doing empty arena shows, New Japan opted not to do that. They waited uh, quite a bit of time until the very end of spring, early summer, to really start up again. And, you know, someone you know was in one of the video packages for that uh, together project that New Japan had when they started having shows. They had the beginning of the New Japan Cup in an empty arena, and then ever since then, they've been doing 20 to 30% capacity shows since. Now, overall, that's a good thing that they, you know, funny enough, they had crowds before the Western audiences have crowds, but now the Western audiences are pretty much back to normal with their crowd attendance. Whereas over in Japan, they're still just having the 25, 30% capacity shows. And over a while, it starts to affect the shows because the shows don't seem as big as they used to be. And one of the key components, for good or bad, about the pro wrestling industry is perspective. And you can't get the perception of a show being big time when you pan out at the audience and you see that there's way more empty seats than there are seats that are filled. Regardless of the reasons, it just comes across as though this show is not really important. That's a little marketing thing that WWE absolutely understood. They understood that, and this was why they didn't do the sparse seating shows. They've never done the sparse seating shows as far as I can tell, except for that WrestleMania, where they hit it so well you really couldn't see it on camera. But that's why WWE is always very conscious of that. Even when they have half-filled arenas for TV tapings, they'll shuttle everybody to one side and shoot everything only towards that side where they have all the people seated. Whereas the other third or one fourth of the arena is basically empty. New Japan does not do that. They just kind of let the seats go sporadically wherever they are. Aesthetically speaking, it's not a good thing. And after a while, that and the lack of the audiences being able to cheer or boo or call out for their favorite wrestlers or scream or anything like that, it has hurt the TV product in a significant way. And I do think that is a big reason why New Japan has been kind of on a downslide, especially for fans over here in the West. The next one I'm going to bring up is another one, obvious one, AEW. All Elite Wrestling came in. Um, it was something that people, so a few people had suspected might happen when Adam Page, Young Bucks, uh, Cody Rhodes, and Kenny Omega, were, and Marty Skrull, too. He was, he was part of that, too, for a time. Uh, but they were all slated to leave New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor. And once they decided that they were starting up All Elite Wrestling and then as the details of AEW started coming out, a lot of attention that some of the people who were following the Elite were giving to New Japan Pro Wrestling then went to AEW. And a lot of those people never went back to New Japan. I think suffice to say is a lot of those fans probably weren't New Japan fans anyway. Um, and that's a topic that's a, another point, a later uh, bullet point in this list. But AEW definitely did take a chunk out of New Japan sales, which I also think may, I mean, we, we still don't know the full story 
of what happened between Kenny Omega and the office in New Japan and Harold May, remember that guy? Uh, we don't really know the full story to what happened behind there. I think some suspect though, that because AEW was doing what it did, that New Japan, who have been spending about a year to two years trying to make inroads as being the second wrestling company in the States, have felt that they kind of got usurped by this Tony Khan guy who took all of their Western stars who were leading their Western expansion and now is doing what they had hoped that they were going to be doing. Realistically though, I don't think New Japan would have gotten onto TBS or TNT or anything like that. I just don't think they had the business contacts in the United States. Again, what Tony Khan did with AEW was remarkable and it took somebody with the clout and the finances of Tony Khan to be able to pull off what AEW has done in this day and age, something that nobody thought was ever gonna happen again. New Japan is also known to play it safe and they're not gonna really put too much out there. They're not gonna gamble too much. So and in some senses, you can understand why they would be a little bit upset with AEW. There is a small rift between New Japan fans and AEW fans because a lot of the New Japan fans, like I said before, said a lot of these elite fans were never really fans of New Japan anyway. And once the elite guys were there, then they didn't care about it again, which is another point which I want to bring up in another bullet point in this list. But number three comes from something else that's uh, slightly related to that, but is a, actually a completely different story is that most of the people that claim they were watching New Japan a couple years ago weren't really watching New Japan. I can count the number of videos and blogs and tweets and podcasts and stuff that I saw from people who were claiming to be big New Japan fans and had no idea uh, about who Tetsuya Naito was. Uh, they didn't know anything about chaos. Uh, all they knew a Bullet Club was that it was that thing that the Young Bucks are in. And, you know, you see people constantly mispronouncing people's names and stuff. Uh, not knowing what the G1 was. And it, it's like, it, there, there were just all these funny things that you saw during that, you know, those few years when New Japan was very hot in the West. That just kind of told me these people weren't really watching New Japan. They were just talking about it because there was a lot of momentum behind it. But I think it could be safe to say that because a lot of people in the wrestling community weren't really watching New Japan, including a lot of influencers in the wrestling community who were pretending that they were watching New Japan but really weren't watching New Japan, I think now that they don't have to feel like they have to pretend that they're talking about it, they just completely abandon it all whatsoever. Well, completely. And now, yeah, we don't even have to worry about what's going on over there with those Japanese people anymore. Number two is bad booking. This is probably one of the more crucial things. There are a number of things that happen that, you know, yeah, New Japan's had injuries, they've had the pandemic, they've had uh, the limited capacity crowds, but the booking has been really suspect over the last year and a half. They tried to do this wonderful term of evil that I think it probably could have worked a lot better if the pandemic hadn't happened with the way that their plan seemed to be going at the beginning of the year and then it got kind of derailed. So they kind of, it seemed like they fast tracked it and then didn't really have the build up to it. So it just kind of fizzled plus the execution of Evil's character as a heel up until recently hasn't been all that well received. The double championship thing was a point of contention for a lot of fans and some of the wrestlers in New Japan. The changing of the IWGP Heavyweight Championship and the Intercontinental Championship and merging them into a new World Heavyweight Championship, plus that belt's design to this day is still contentious with a lot of people. The limited amount of matches on shows, which leaves limited amount of story time. You know, mostly it's, uh, it's five match shows where four of the matches are just exhibition matches, multi-man tags basically, and then there's one match where there's any kind of a storyline involved with it now, which that I think that's hurt a lot of things. And just a lot of things kind of lingering on for a long time. Yes, they introduced the United Empire, uh, but that had kind of a lukewarm reception. It was a good idea, but they never really went there with it. Suzuki Goon is booked very weirdly, like whether or not they're even a faction anymore because so many people have kind of come and gone from it. Bullet Club with people who's in charge of it now. There's guys over here, there's guys over there. There's Evil's got his own mini faction. Uh, Jay White's in the States doing his own thing in Impact, Tama Tonga, and those guys are in Japan doing this. And, you know, it, it's it's not as well defined as far as the character roles are as it used to be. And oddly enough, the only faction that really seems to be solidifying itself right now is Chaos, and that's only a sub-faction within Chaos being the Never Open Way Six-Man Tag Team Champions. All the other factions in New Japan seem to be kind of 
treading water, which I guess you could say is overall the status of the booking. I really get the feeling that they're treading water until the pandemic's over. They're just trying to do as much as they can to kind of get by until the pandemic's over. Now, whether or not that's the case, we're going to see probably within the next year whether or not that's the case because the COVID cases in Japan are way low now. They're almost as low as they were at the beginning of this whole thing. So at some point in time, and even New Japan has started to announce that they're starting to kind of get back into the longer cards with more matches on them. And eventually the capacity will be there and the fans will be able to react again. And at that point, then we'll be able to tell, A, what the toll has been on New Japan from this law and whether or not the booking gets better. But I think as far as, that's mainly in Japan, but I think as far as the West is concerned, there is one thing that kind of overrides everything, which is why the interest has kind of dropped in them. And the number one reason is that WWE is still the center of everything. You know, I can say this is just not a problem for the lack of interest in New Japan or the interest in New Japan kind of dying off, but this is kind of the problem with the wrestling industry for a long time. Anybody who's been watching my channel knows that I've been watching wrestling since before, you know, all of this stuff, the Monday Night War, and there, when before it was just WWE, and back when there were like at least five or six legitimate big name or at least mid-sized wrestling companies just in the States and in North America. And a lot of the wrestling fans today who are of adult age, who are in the key demographic, a lot of them, most of them came up, or all of them came up at a time when it was pretty much just WWE and TNA was kind of over here. So that WWE centric mentality, even with people who are very critical of WWE, even with people who go on long tweet raids about WWE, even though people who troll WWE tweets and, and post on social media, even people that do hours and hours of videos on this platform about how terrible WWE is. The problem with the, all that stuff though is that WWE is still the center of the universe for them. Now how this relates to the lack of interest in the West of New Japan is that because during 2016, 17, 18, 19, again, like I said, this ties into a previous point, when Kenny Omega and the Bucks and Cody were all there and they were taking these little digs and shots at WWE and they were calling them out and, and talking about you know professional wrestling and the revolution of professional wrestling and their main base of operations was really New Japan. Because even though, yeah, they were in Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor was not having the big crowds that New Japan had. There was no... 30, 40,000 seat events for <laughs> Ring of Honor. I think their biggest event was what, six, seven, eight, nine thousand. Whereas you can go to on any month in New Japan, you'd have a big event with, you know, eight, nine, ten thousand people. Some of the bigger shows, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 people. So that's where a lot of the, you know, they could go and say, hey, look, we're big time too, but we're not in WWE, we're on the other side of the world. But once again, and tying back to a previous point, once the elite were in AEW and there wasn't all of this anti-WWE chatter going on associated with New Japan, I think a lot of the people, even though, yes, again, the same people who complain about WWE and talk about how bad it is, and they were looking at New Japan before or pretending to, once all that chatter was not in New Japan, they weren't watching New Japan anymore. There's also the thing that New Japan, has, because of the pandemic, hasn't been able to have a lot of the celebrity uh, Western wrestlers over there. There are no more tours of Chris Jericho. There's no John Moxley going over there. Uh, even with the Forbidden Door open, most of that Forbidden Door has been swinging towards AEW with Satoshi Kojima and Minoru Suzuki and Yuji Nagata and Kenta and and those and you know those guys going over to AEW and Impact and nobody really going over to Japan from Impact or AEW yet. Even with that, the only time a lot of these people showed an interest in New Japan was when John Moxley showed up. Like, I remember one show I covered and like Moxley was one of a couple of big things that happened on the show, but I looked and the only thing that anybody was talking about besides, you know, those of us who regularly cover New Japan was John Moxley there. And it's like, there were like three or four things that happened on that show that were pretty damn cool. In fact, when John Moxley declared for the G1 Climax, Kenta also declared, Kenta also made his debut in New Japan, which was a huge deal because he was a Noah guy. And he declared for the G1 Climax. No mention of that, even though he was a Dale Tommy in NXT. Nah, it was John Moxley. And I'd be remiss if not to talk about Probably, and I hate talking about these subjects, but maybe a little racial 
xenophobia going on here because again the only things that a lot of these guys ever seem to want to report on with new japan is if somebody let's just put it this way if will osprey does something they talk about new japan if john moxley shows up they talk about new japan if chris jericho shows up they talk about new japan if jay white shows up in impact they talk about new japan um anything else going on in new japan if it's not somebody from the west or who has a tie to wwe in some way shape or form or is called out wwe in some shape or form if it ain't one of those guys on a new japan show a lot of these people ain't paying attention to it and ultimately like i said before this is my general criticism of the wrestling community over the past couple years and past couple decades really is that as long as the focus of everything is around WWE, which is why I say, you know, AEW is doing good and everything else, but it's still Vince's world and we're just living in it. And the evidence is there amongst us in the community. Every single one of us who only talks about stuff as long as it relates somehow to WWE, and we're not watching these other shows for what they are, we're only interested in these other shows if somebody that was in WWE shows up there. I mean, it'd be kind of it's kind of like if the movie community, which I know the YouTube movie community definitely doesn't do this. This is just a comparison. It'd be like if they, all of the movie reviewers, if Jeremy Johns and Chris Stuckman and Schmoes No and John Campia and Black Nerd Comedy and all those guys, if they only talked about the Marvel stuff all the time, and so Robert Downey Jr. is in this other movie. Where we, well, we only care about that other movie because Iron Man's in it. You know, they, they don't do that. A lot of them are savvy enough to understand the movie industry as a whole. They all have their different opinions. They all have different interests and stuff. And I don't understand. I mean, I understand why, but I don't agree with why, I should say, that the wrestling community is not like that. You guys aren't watching any of the Fast and Furious stuff, any of the DC TV shows. Stranger Things, The Witcher, Net is it in Marvel? Well, no, it's uh, not. But uh, that doesn't, then it doesn't matter. Like, they don't do that. It's like, they there's, there's people who are into more hardcore stuff, like Stuckman's into more, you know, nuanced, more indie films, and then, you know, Jeremy Johns is into a lot of different nerd culture stuff, and Campia is more about the business of the movie industry, and Grace is whatever Grace does. But there's, <laughs> there's, you know what I'm saying? There's like in that community, there's like a lot of different voices talking about a lot of different aspects of the entire movie industry. Whereas in the wrestling community, again, like I said, 90% of us, we just talk about WWE or anything related to WWE. And if we're talking about another company, it's only because of some relation to WWE or somebody in it that used to be in WWE. I've said for a very long time, this is a toxic thing for the community. And until this community I'm sorry I'm shooting on this and people are going to get upset about it, but this is just the truth. Until this community gets out of the mindset that the only thing that matters is WWE, whether you criticize them or not, if all, if you can't look at all of these other places that are doing all this cool stuff and if you don't like it or if you're not interested in it because it doesn't have the WWE shine on it, the logo on it, you know, they, they, this industry is not going to be lasting very long. In fact, even with a, a very hot contested war between two billionaires and two million dollar, multi-million dollar companies, one much larger than the other one, but they're all multi-million dollar companies, like in the hundreds of millions of dollars. They're going head to head. And at the most that they could draw last Friday was under two million people. The community needs to expand beyond this. That's all that I'm saying. And yes, back to the original point, this is transferring not only to New Japan, but to a lot of other companies that they're not being, they're not, it, it seems like it's, it's very hard for other people in the community, for fans, for tweets, for influencers, for podcasters to enjoy wrestling companies for what they are, for wrestling, for being wrestling shows. And it's just the drama about who's the best and how many people are watching what. Sorry for the rant. That is my diatribe here on the reasons why Five of the reasons I feel that a lot of the West has fallen out of love with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Hopefully it will change around and hopefully, like I said at the last point, maybe someday soon we can get out of this everything. The only things that matter are, how, are, are things that relate back to WWE in some way, shape, or form. But I want to know what you guys think about this. What are your reasons that you think New Japan Pro Wrestling's viewership has fallen off here in the States, in the UK, and other places in the West? Let your voice be heard. 
in the comment box below. Also, don't forget down in the description box, I got a lot of free goodies for you guys down there. So definitely check some of that stuff out. Until next time, I will see you guys here for more news, rumors, and countdowns on the Ranton Review Pro Wrestling. Have a good day.